your dreams are bigger, bolder, and more badass than the life you're living now. But something just keeps getting in the way. Join certified coach and former therapist Diane Wingert for the Driven Woman Podcast. She'll show you how to get rid of whatever is holding you back so you can stop spinning your wheels and up-level your life. Get ready to hop in and buckle up. This is the Driven Woman Podcast, and we're heading for the fast lane. I didn't have you helping me along the way to understand a lot of this stuff. The meds would have been a waste for me, a complete and total waste. There's no magic pill. It's always going to be something I'm going to have to work on, and I am understanding that and being okay with that and just kind of working through that. For the first time in my life, I'm going to tell you right now, the meds have allowed me to slow stuff down enough that I've never been this effective at anything positive ever in my life. But I've also never had it explained to me by somebody who understands what's going on in my head either. It's funny because at first I said I would never own my own practice. And now I own my own practice. And now I would say, um, I'm never going to take it any more than just treating patients. <laughs> and now I'm thinking about how can I start training other therapists. So I remember when we talked about what you introduced as habit stacking, so pairing your habits. And when you did initially bring that up, my initial reaction was like, ugh, like that sounds awful. Like, I don't want to do that. But that was one of the first shifts that our work together had changed. And that is something that I'm grateful for every day. Well, hey, and welcome back to my fellow Driven Women. Do you know what today is? You don't? It's our one-year podversary, girl. Yes, the Driven Women podcast has been produced every single week for a solid year. Now, if you are anything like me, and I think you are, you probably wouldn't be here, you know it's not always that easy to do creative work consistently. It's not always possible to keep with something after the initial thrill and novelty wears off, right? My personal experience over the last year of becoming a podcaster and not just showing up on other people's podcasts as a guest, which I also love doing and will continue to do, but actually making the commitment and following through to create this podcast week after week after week, well, let's just say it has been a personal growth experience. I'm going to take you back over the last several years to some very cringeworthy and kind of embarrassing moments along the way as I attempted to launch this podcast, not once, not twice, but several times without success. What finally helped me turn the corner all the people that have helped me along the way to make this possible, and what I've learned from this experience that I can use in every area of my business and life, and I want you to be able to do so too. So before we dig in, as always, I'm going to share one of our recent podcast reviews. This one is from my new friend, Bianca Woolwick, who is the host of the Please Don't Kick Me Out podcast all about imposter syndrome. It is awesome. You definitely want to check it out. Bianca writes, where do I begin? Do you ever just want to feel understood, like just understood and heard? Well, that's what Diane manages to do. From her thoughtful guest to her vulnerability and grit, these are great conversations that will light a fire under you to get out there and make it happen. As a person with ADHD, I just can't thank Diane enough for sharing her tips, tools, and resources with her audience. Well, Bianca, thank you for sharing this generous podcast praise. You know how much they mean because you're a podcaster too. And for those of you that haven't left your review yet, well, let's just say I think it would be the perfect podversary present. So it would be great if a whole bunch of them just came in at once. I'll read them all. I promise you know I will. So come with me down memory lane. Let me share with you the surprising truths about my own struggles to share my voice, which might surprise you since I do seem to be pretty freaking articulate 
and it does seem like I like to talk, make no mistake, this has been a challenge and I'm going to share it all with you. Here we go. Well, one thing that you helped give me insight on is how sensitive I am and because I'm an empath being in traffic and loud noises throughout the day, just getting to home, that alone was really draining. And now working from home, it's like I'm able to conserve that energy. One thing that you also mentioned was because I was working so much, I didn't have time to do the things that were meaningful to me and that included learning, getting into the grind. You kind of just like, okay, well, I'm just going to do instead of really stepping back and looking at more strategic ways to have longer term plans. It is being comfortable with the high speed of a race car and free falling into it when necessary. However, I have created structured things that allow me to think and point direction at a specific goal. It's okay to say, no, this is what we do here. This is that stamp. And it was just like pieces and parts of things that we had done that worked to make us successful. But it was through that figuring out how to connect everything. And definitely your influence helped me so much. Like you're an angel. I honestly cannot believe this day is here. It's my one year podversary. I can't believe I have been podcasting for an entire year. I never thought that was actually going to happen. Not that I didn't put a lot of money and time into pursuing it. So for this episode, I want to take you down memory lane with me and tell you about my personal journey to becoming a podcaster, to creating and developing and producing this podcast, The Driven Woman, now for an entire year. And frankly, the personal growth journey that it has been for me. I want to share with you the various people that have helped me along the way and the various ups and downs of the journey, what I learned about myself. And I think Whether you ever want to have a podcast or not, everything in this episode can be applied to really any creative project that you want to do, or even starting a business if you haven't yet done so. Because the lessons that I learned about how to show up, how to plan ahead, how to accept help, how to know what kind of help you need and when how to be strategic and consistent, all of that applies to everything you might ever want to do in your business and frankly, a lot of things in your life. So let me go back and start at the beginning. My personal history with podcasting began, I think it was 2015 or 2016. I was at a conference for therapists who wanted to go beyond the private practice and up level in their business, whether they were creating courses or group programs or whether they wanted to expand from an individual solo practice to a group practice, write a book, whatever it was. It was a small event in Southern California. And while I was there, the host of the event, one of the organizers, announced that a friend of his was going to be starting a podcast for a particular audience and wondered if anyone there at this event was interested in being a regular guest expert because the podcast host was looking for a psychotherapist. Well, at that time, I still was a therapist and I was working with the female midlife audience. That was kind of my niche, my specialty, and kind of preventing midlife crisis sort of thing. And the name of the podcast was Experience 50. The host is Mary Rogers. It is still a very active, very vibrant podcast and community. But I connected with Mary. We hit it off like gangbusters. And I became a regular guest expert on the Experience 50 podcast. And Mary and I got to know each other pretty well over time. 
that was the beginning. I took it very seriously from the start. I got a professional podcast mic and headphones and decided I was just going to jump right in. But I very much saw myself as a podcast guest. I did not even think about starting my own podcast. And at one point in time, Mary suggested that that probably wasn't the best use of my time. And I think at the time that she said it, she was spot on. So I continued to be a guest. I enjoyed that role. It was a very familiar role because I was a public speaker from time to time in my professional life. I enjoyed doing that. It seemed fun and easy to me. I know it's something that a lot of people hate and fear public speaking, but I enjoy it. So being a guest on other people's podcasts was very comfortable for me. And I was kind of making the rounds of other podcasts that were hosted by therapists who wanted people with different types of expertise. So I did that very happily for a couple of years and didn't really think that it needed to go beyond that. It was a good marketing engine for me. I always got clients when people heard me on other podcasts. So I was happy with it. Now, around 2018, my husband was actively looking to change his career and we were contemplating a move. We just didn't know where to. He was at a point where he needed to take his next step and we were literally interviewing all over the country and even outside of the country. We came very, very close to moving to the Middle East. He was offered a three-year contract in Abu Dhabi. And after doing some research, I discovered that I was not going to be allowed to work there because of the way they have things set up. And so we were going to be there for three years and I was not going to be able to work. Now, if I decided to start a business there, I could own less than half of it and more than half of it would have to be owned by an Emirati. And that didn't really seem like the best use of my time and talents. So I decided, well, I got three years. I will just produce content. I will create a podcast. I will record, record, record. I'll write a book. I'll do all the things. I'll create an online course. I'll just be very, very busy, but I won't be able to release any of it because of some of the censorship laws in the Middle East and so forth. So I thought, okay, this is great. I got my plan. And since I was anticipating leaving Southern California and being very far away, from the different sources of support, I decided I would go through Pat Flynn's Fast Track, which is a weekend where you go to San Diego. It's a lovely program, by the way. It is all inclusive. You're in a very small cohort. It's a very high-end program. Lots of access to Pat and his lovely assistant, Jess Lindgren. And you learn everything you need to know about launching a podcast, growing a podcast. He has someone as part of his team that is a graphic artist who produces your show art. You get all the equipment you need, the basic setup, like shipped to your house. It's the first rate program. And so I was ready to go. And then we didn't move to the Middle East. My decision-making strategy left much to be desired and my outcomes, they were far too inconsistent to really be counted upon. You know, sometimes I ended up somewhere I wanted to be, but most of the time I ended up thinking, well, I didn't see this coming or, hmm, this isn't what I expected. And frankly, I got tired of disappointing myself. And I often felt discouraged that I kept finding myself feeling stupid or embarrassed when I just couldn't explain my thought process to others. I finally had to admit to myself that I had gone beyond not having a plan to choosing not to plan. You see, once I finally reached a point where I recognized that not only did I not have a plan, but taking action without a plan was my way of making life feel more adventuresome and exciting than it actually was. And that's when I knew I had to start to change. And I was so focused on that was how it was going to happen that even though I had the training, I had the equipment, I had the show art, I had an online course that would back up everything I learned from Pat and his team that weekend, I did not launch a podcast. It was like I had it in my mind that it was going to happen a certain way. And when my circumstances changed, my plans just flew out the window. I do want to shout out Jess Lindgren because one of the best takeaways from that experience is not only the show art, and I will also tag the lovely graphic artist who created it for me in the show notes, Pam Kovarubias. 
I still use that show art today and love it. And Jess and I have developed a long-term friendship since then. But I didn't launch my podcast. So 2019 rolls around and I meet another lovely individual, Jackie McDougall. She was the mom of one of my husband's patients. And so we met that way. He said, I met this mom and you two are two of a kind, two peas in a pod. You're going to love each other. And of course, as soon as I met Jackie, I realized, oh, this is true. And as my luck would have it, Jackie is a creative consultant, an experienced podcaster. And one of the things she does is she helps women launch their podcasts. She has a great program called Find Your Voice. And I went through this program. Now, as this plot thickens, I was very supportive of all the other women, gave really good feedback, I think, to the other women in the group about how they could position their podcast and their message and all of that. But I still did not launch my own podcast. Listen, sooner or later, you're going to discover that her winning formula isn't it just right for your personality or your industry or even your ideal customer's needs? Once we hit the stuck cycle, we do tend to stay there for a while and keep spinning our wheels because we don't know how we got there or we don't want to start over. Now, this one, this unprepared kind of stuckness, it honestly can be avoided completely by making a promise to yourself, hold your hand up and solemnly swear. You will not buy another online course, coaching program, or pay a fuck ton of money to some self-appointed guru without doing thorough research into free or low-cost alternatives. We also need to take an honest look at our motivations, our expectations, and our abilities. So here we now are at 2019. I have been a guest on a variety of podcasts for almost three years. I have gone through two professional podcast launch programs and I still haven't launched a podcast. Now, if I want to be even more embarrassed, that year I also went to Podcast Movement. 5,000 podcasters. It's a great conference, by the way. In Orlando, Florida, I met some other wonderful podcasters. I stayed with Jackie. I mean, I had everything I needed. I still didn't do it. You see the pattern? So here we are now in 2020 and the COVID pandemic and quarantine comes around. I learned something very important about myself at this point. I am grateful and fortunate that I have not been personally affected by COVID. Some members of my family have gotten COVID and recovered from it, but I have not lost anyone from COVID. And I am at a stage in my life and personal circumstances where I was basically able to go home and stay home for a year. I also had recently relocated, as some of you know, from Southern California to Portland, Oregon, and I really didn't know anybody yet. So this experience removed all my distractions and most of my excuses. And I then joined a program called The Front Row with Jen Lehner. All of these connections, all of these wonderful people, all of these people who have contributed to my podcasting journey will all be identified in the show notes if you want to look any of them up. For me, it is about following that like intuitive brain sometimes. You know, we all have those moments, you're in the shower, you wake up in the middle of the night, you're driving the car and suddenly something pops into your brain. Those intuitive moments I think are so valuable and so important. Mm -hmm. And I just would encourage everyone, hold on to those. I know for myself, because sometimes lots of ideas float through my brain, I collect them. I can't really. They may not be all all. ones. (laughs) They may not be ones that I'm going to do right now. So in my office, I actually have this really cool board. What I do is I put these ideas on post-its and then I have a side that says for now and a side that says for the future. And because they're on post-its, I can move them back and forth. It's like, Mm -hmm. oh, I can look at the for future signs. Like, you know what? I want to work on that this week. And I'll bring it over the for now thing. But I got something on the now side that I'm like, you know what? I did some work. I want to keep it in mind. I'll move it. But for me, it's about gathering those things because those intuitive moments are the brilliant ones. But Jen Lehner runs a challenge twice a year. 
in the spring and in the fall. It's an accountability challenge and anybody in her program can sign up for it. It's four weeks and you commit to a goal. You identify your good, better, best outcome. You break down the steps to achieving that goal one week at a time. And over the course of four weeks, you publicly state your goal. You break down the steps and you are going through this challenge with all the other people going through the challenge. And it was at that point that I was so sick of my bullshit excuses, so sick of watching other people launch podcasts and me thinking, when am I going to do this? I really had no excuses. I just wasn't doing it. So I decided to take advantage of the opportunity of this accountability challenge, plus the pandemic quarantine situation where I really wasn't going to go anywhere and do anything anyway. I chose the date. I made it public. I participated in a circle of support. I broke it down step by step. I rewarded my progress as I went along and I celebrated at every step of the way. And I learned that was ultimately the final step that I needed to get me up and over the fence. So as of May 19th, 2020, I launched the Driven Woman podcast. And we are now close to 20,000 downloads and a growing audience of loyal followers who eagerly look forward to it week after week. And this never would have been possible if I hadn't stuck with it, forgiven myself for all of the bullshit procrastinating and excuse making. But what I've ultimately learned since then, I am using in every other area of my business and life. And so I want to share those lessons with you because I am a woman with ADHD and my history is that I get very enthusiastic, optimistic, excited about something. I commit to it. I jump in. I usually purchase all of the courses and the equipment and all of that and support the other people doing the thing. And sometimes that's all I do. How would you introduce them to EFT first? What would be like the first point of entry into a practice in their life? Would you teach them how to use it as like first aid? Or would you try to get them to adopt it as preventative practice, like part of their morning routine? So what's funny is that since my diagnosis with ADHD, I've been speaking to other women and coaching other women with ADHD. So this kind of niche that I work with of overwhelmed women with busy brains is kind of like AKA, you may have undiagnosed ADHD. Right. Or you could just be one of those people that just have that predisposal to just feeling overwhelmed. You know, you don't have to have ADHD to be overwhelmed. I felt that it was very effective for me because I have a very busy head. And I went for Reiki and I went for massage and I couldn't relax. I had to do a lot of mindset work, a lot of self-coaching to uncover what the real problem was so that I could get over it and move forward. And what I ultimately discovered was that I was afraid that I wasn't going to be capable of being consistent, planning ahead, accepting the help that I needed, being strategic, and just frankly sticking with it until it helped me reach my goals. I just thought I'm going to do it and then I'm going to fizzle. So better not to start than to fizzle based on many fizzling experiences in my personal and professional history. But ultimately I decided, you know what? There's tons of people that pod fade. This is the term for starting and then fizzling. Tons. In fact, probably the majority of podcasts don't make it past a year. The statistics that I've read are a significant percentage of podcasts don't make it past the first seven to 10 episodes. And this now is episode 55. So what I learned is that I can be strategic. I can plan ahead. I can identify where I need help, when I need help, 
what kind of help I need and allow myself to receive that help, which has allowed me to evolve in so many ways. I have literally been able to use the experience of becoming a podcaster over the last year to create systems like batching to identify who would be a good guest and create a pitch process. I want to shout out my wonderful team, Leslie, Deanne, and Sarah, who helped me with the things that I could do. But if I did, they would slow me down to the point where you might be lucky to get one podcast episode a month and it wouldn't sound very good. So I was always that person who thought I had to do it all and I had to do it all myself. And that if I accepted help, that meant I wasn't enough. And I know that that's a very common thought, especially among women, but it holds us back so much when we try to do everything. It's just not feasible and it's definitely not sustainable. So I was able to allow myself to evolve to the point where I recognized that I do need accountability. The accountability challenge through Jen Laner's Front Row program got me to start the podcast. But frankly, what has allowed me to sustain it and to go from solo episodes to now solo interviews and client success stories, and it will continue to evolve, is the feedback that I get from listeners in the form of reviews, which I love so much because it is a little bit of a weird thing to be talking to yourself in the closet or talking to your guest and releasing this message into the world and really not knowing who's listening. That's still a little bit of a weird thing for me. So when I get reviews, I know, well, this person's listening and this is what they think. And that person's listening and this is what they think. So if you've been thinking about leaving a review and you think, oh, someone else will do it or it's not that important or whatever, it is important for all the podcasts that you like to listen to and learn from and be inspired by, not just this one. The other thing I wanted to share that I've learned along this journey is you might think that someone who is as articulate as I am wouldn't have any problem finding her voice and sharing it with the world. I learned many years ago that really my strongest gift is my communication skills. And that came with the package. So I'm grateful for that. I've honed it over the years. I've developed my ability to speak and share ideas, but I was born with these verbal skills. So the thing is, is that I was a therapist for a lot of years. And before that, I was in medical sales. Now, I'm going to take you back a little bit. In medical sales, you are sharing your voice. You are initiating conversations. You are initiating sales conversations. But it's based on the product or service you're selling. And most of the words are the ones the company taught you that the marketing department have approved for your pitches. So it's your voice, but not really. And as a therapist, which I was for many years and really enjoyed being a therapist, and I did some public speaking to professional audiences of other mental health professionals in my therapy role. For any of you who are therapists or have been a therapist, you know that being a therapist is more about the other person. The focus is on your client. And a good therapy session is one where the client does a lot of the talking. In fact, there's a lot of memes and a lot of people who make fun of therapists saying they basically sit there with an empathic expression on their face, wringing their hands and nodding their head and asking minimal questions like, how does that make you feel? I was never that kind of therapist. I think you can probably guess. I did a lot more talking and I was a lot more directive than the norm. But be that as it may, most of my voice 
through those years as a therapist was directed toward the client's specific needs. I wasn't talking about myself. I wasn't talking about my opinions, my perspective, my personal journey. I certainly wasn't sharing any of my internal workings of my business or my lifestyle or even my beliefs and values because the focus is really on the other person. So becoming a coach and becoming a podcaster meant I needed to start defining my thoughts, my perspective, my take on things, and then sharing that with the world. Now, I'm not exactly a hot mess, but I am far from perfect, and I'll be the first one to admit it. Well, sometime later, I realized that actually her recommendation was spot on. I am a perfectionist, and I always have been. The real reason I didn't get it is because I misunderstood the definition. I thought a perfectionist is someone whose life is perfect. But guess what? It turns out that a perfectionist is someone who believes that it could be, should be, wishes it were, and suffers internally because it isn't. Oh, that's what it means. Yeah, that's definitely me. Now, I did rush right out and start coaching people on perfectionism because I hadn't yet dealt with it myself. It took me quite a while to work my way out from under that denial. I mean, I didn't want to be the blind leading the blind. And I actually didn't even start dealing with it right away. Now, the first 25 episodes were all solos. And that was for a specific reason, in case any of you have been wondering. Why did I go from solo episodes to guest interviews and client success stories? There is a method to my madness. I feel like I should cue like an evil witch uh, voice, but I don't have that kind of equipment. So just pretend. Anyway, the first 25 episodes were solo episodes. I did them standing up in my walk-in closet. And for you fellow podcasters, you know why that is, because the acoustics are better when there's buffering from the fabric and the carpet and all that. Anyway, the purpose of that was I needed to get comfortable just talking not talking to someone, not back and forth conversation like I would do in a coaching call or a therapy session, but just sharing my thoughts on a particular topic. And I felt I needed about 25 episodes to figure out if I can do that, if I can do that consistently, if I even like doing that and want to continue. I did not want to start having guests immediately because I knew that would make the whole podcasting experience much more complicated, much more time and labor intensive, more expensive from a production perspective. But also I was worried about letting other people down and I was not yet willing to risk that. So the first 25 episodes is just literally me standing in my closet talking to myself. And I learned a couple of things from that. One, I can be consistent. Two, I do kind of like this. Three, the more I share my perspective, the more I figure out what my perspective is. I literally am verbally processing my perspective on this podcast. But then I got a little lonely. I mean, we are now in year two of this pandemic. And most of the world is still under some state of lockdown, including where I live. So I'm an extrovert. I'm less of one than I used to be. I'm, I've become much more comfortable over this last year spending time alone. But I do love people. And I like being around them. And I especially like meeting inspiring, dynamic women who are doing interesting things. I most love meeting women that are what I call like-minded and like-brained. And this podcast gives me the opportunity to do that. I love doing the client success story interviews because I have the chance to show off my wonderful clients, revisit our work together, and remind myself that what I do matters because it changes lives. And I love sharing that on the podcast because there's a lot of people who don't really know how coaching works and whether it might work for them. So 
This year has been very eventful. I don't have the biggest podcast. I don't even have the best podcast. I know that. And I'm totally okay with it. But what I'm really okay with is that I have proven to myself that when it matters and when I get the right support, guidance, and accountability, I can be consistent. I can be strategic. I can plan ahead and I can get and accept help where needed. And that has made so many things possible that, well, I just don't know what juicy goodness might be coming down the pipe in the future. But I do know that I will be sharing it with you, dear listener. And I want to thank you for sticking with me through this journey for however many episodes you've been on it. For those of you that have just found me, welcome. Feel free to go back and binge or cherry pick the ones that you think might be best for you. And for those of you that have been friends and followers and supporters from the beginning, I want to thank you so much for being with me on this journey. And I hope that you will be able to recognize within my story that you can do the same. It may not be a podcast for you. It might be a book. It might be an online course. It might be a creative project that you've been holding back on. But you can find your voice, you can share your voice, you can use your voice. And in the words of one of my favorite clients, Tracy Watts Serino, I will tag her as well. I have a question for you, Tracy. I know that you were told a lot growing up, and even as an adult, you're a lot, or sometimes you're too much. And I know when I first met you, You believed that. It didn't seem like a belief. It felt like a statement of fact. Do you believe it now? Do you still believe that you're too much? And if not, what do you believe instead? I believe I'm a force for good. So I've replaced it. And I show up in the world exactly as the right amount for the given moment. So I just want to conclude with that thought. Find your voice. Use your voice and be a force for good, and then keep on going. Hey, if I can become consistent, you can too. That's all for now. And thanks for helping me celebrate my one-year podversary. See you next week. You've been listening to the Driven Woman Podcast with Diane Wingert. Want more straight talk and strategy each week that will take you from spinning to winning? Don't forget to hit subscribe in your podcast player so you won't miss a single episode. Then head on over to the Driven Woman free and private Facebook group community. See you there.